sewing friends welcome 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 to the let's go sew with joanne banco live show and this is the so tell me show tonight so question for you first of all how many of you are looking to be inspired with some new ideas and new projects and maybe you're interested in doing that with some old stuff have I piqued your interest? I hope so, because tonight is going to be a fabulous, fabulous show. And in just a minute or two, you will get to meet my special guest. I know some of you probably know her already. So let me say uh, hi to everybody. Um, go ahead and uh, let us know in the chat where you're chatting from. Um, say hi to each other. I know we have a lot of friends here, and I'm just so glad to see everybody from the Let's Go So family of friends showing up here tonight for another live show. This is always uh, a highlight of the month, and I'm just always thrilled to see everybody that's here. So I'm going to call out just a few names. I see Clovis. I see Sandra, Cindy, Angela, Joe Allen, um, Diane, and she is interested in learning the things that I just said we're going to do tonight. Uh, Ann Philbeck's here, Lottie's here, Marie's here, Cheryl, Christy. Uh, let's see. Oh, you guys are you're going like too fast for me. Rhonda. Hey, Rhonda. And uh, Stephanie's here. Shirley, Aaron, Caroline, Beth Small. Hey, Beth. Glad to have you here from in the neighborhood. Uh, Bambi Lynn Wilson. So good to have you here tonight. Wanda and Charlotte. And you are from all over the place. And I know some of you are uh, checking in from some super hot places. So <laughs> I feel for you. I know it's kind of rough when it gets um, so super hot out there that you can't go inside and you, you're, you know, I mean, you can't go outside and you're stuck kind of inside. But um, we do that in the wintertime here. So I always say you trade kind of the hot for the cold thing. But it's always a good day in the sewing space. The weather is always perfect. The temperature is always just right for some creativity. So like I said, tonight, I've just got a really wonderful guest for you. So without any more time wasted, I'm going to go ahead and tell you who it is. None other than my very special. Sorry about that. Um, and Heather is just uh, somebody that I've known for quite some time. She is um, really just <laughs> one of those people that I could talk about forever because I have learned so much from her over the years. I've enjoyed um, our friendship and our relationship, um, just uh, bantering about sewing and bouncing on ideas off of each other. But I am so inspired by all of the work that she has done. So if you don't know Heather, let me tell you just a little bit about her. She is a, a quilt pattern designer. She's the designer behind the inventive denim pattern line. I would love to know in the chat if you are familiar with that pattern line. If you are not, you are going to really see um, some beautiful, beautiful patterns tonight and see exactly um, how talented she is. And Heather is also currently an educator for OESD. So yes, you've seen Heather here, there in different places, but currently she is now an educator for Oklahoma Embroidery Supply and Design Company. So you are going to start seeing her um, representing that company in both um, live and in a virtual events as well. You know, uh, Heather tells me that her her passion is teaching and helping others to express their creativity through sewing and embroidery. Um, she recently started a whole new creative endeavor by um, upping the ante on her own YouTube channel. So she's had that channel for a while, but she's really adding a lot more to it. And we're going to get, get to hear a little bit about that tonight, too. Um uh, Heather and her husband live near Nashville, Tennessee, and they are transplants there. So maybe she'll tell you a little bit about that too. That's not their native area, 
although I think they, she settled in quite well there. Um, they enjoy rural living with their three dogs and their bees. Yes, I said bees, B-E-E-S. You will learn more about the bees as well tonight. So let me go ahead and bring Heather up. Heather, so good to see you tonight. Hi, Joanne. Oh, Thank you so my. much for having me. You are, you've got lots of fans here, lots of people um, that are um, so glad to see you and some people that are glad to meet you. So <laughs> likewise, everyone, thank you so much for the kind comments. Oh my, I, you know, when, when we were talking about getting together for the show, how long ago did we talk about getting together for this show? <laughs> a while, yeah. A while. <laughs> so I'm so glad we were able to connect and, and make it work. Um, and Stephanie's always a already asking, what is your YouTube channel? So um, oh, let's see if okay. I got that one up on. Uh, um, your YouTube channel is called what, Heather? Sewing with Heather. So it's the same as my website, Sewing okay. with Heather. There's your um, yeah. website there. And um, I will have all of that in the show notes. So don't worry about it. Everything, every link you're going to need to everything that we talk about here tonight will definitely be in those show notes. So we can follow up, follow up with that. Oh my. So what have you been up to Heather? Oh my goodness, Joanne. <laughs> it is a busy summer, but as you were mentioning to everyone, it is a hot summer and we just had a thunderstorm roll in. So, you know, we got a little bit of relief here in Tennessee, but I've been traveling for OESD. Uh, I've been working on videos. I've been um, actually canning. We've been canning food. So we've been making oh. um, salsa and we've been making spaghetti sauce and things like that. Good for you. Oh, you! I, it's amazing to me, you know, how, how much you uh, adapted to and adopted that whole rural lifestyle because you really weren't, uh, you weren't a country girl before, right? No, you know, I grew up in a more rural setting, but I've lived in, I lived in Nevada and Reno for years and years and years. So this was the goal though, move to Tennessee, go rural. My husband was just so excited to do this. So he loves it hot. He loves to sweat and be outside. <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> oh my. Well, we got a picture of him that we'll show a little, little later in the show. And you could tell us a little bit more how you got into the whole bee thing. But uh, I just, I really enjoy following everything you're doing and, and uh, you know, seeing your, your postings of the bees and seeing your postings of, of those canned things. And of course, those are, <laughs> we're always interested in all of those um, special homemaking skills too. But mm -hmm. But I got to tell you, when I look at your samples, oh. every time I've seen you online, every time I've seen you do a presentation, I am just um, mesmerized by oh. your creativity. Um, you, you truly are one of the most creative people with the whole thing of sewing, embroidery, quilting, and crafting than, that I have ever, ever known. You just Thank find you. a way to marry all of that together. And I, I just find that really, really just um, amazing. It's totally oh, amazing. Thank you. It is definitely a passion as everyone who is here in those for themselves as well. Oh, you're getting some good, some good wishes here. So let me bring up a few, a few comments. Hi, Hi Marilyn. Marilyn's looking forward to this and Joe Allen Hi, Joe. is already getting her peaches ready. So <laughs> teach you. You can teach me. <laughs> Clovis wants to know if you have a big garden. We have a pretty big garden. Yes, we focus very much on things that we know we want to can, which we do jalapenos, we do salsa, we do spaghetti sauce. So we've got parsley and cilantro and those tons of tomatoes, lots of things like that. Oh, wow. And it was it a good year? Has it been a good year so far? Yeah, you know, I'm learning the farmer's way, which is that you have to rely on the weather and sometimes our garden isn't as good as other years because we're inundated with weather or not have enough of it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that is true. You just wait and see what happens every day. Right. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, Barbara. That's so kind. Yeah. Hey, Barbara. Good to have you here tonight. And we have another um, mutual friend here tonight, Tammy. Hello, hey, Tammy. Tammy. Tammy is, um, Tammy is somebody that is always, uh, always there to help. <laughs> when I think I of Tammy, I think Tammy's always there to help. 
<laughs> and Anne has just canned 24 pints of pickled jalapenos. So Anne is well familiar with the process. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, hey, Patricia. Good to have you here tonight. Let's see. Who else is here? Gail? Oh, Heather is the best. Gail. I agree 100%. Percent. You guys Absolutely. are very kind. Thank you. <laughs> oh, we got lots of canners here. So you got a lot Ooh. of good, a lot of good company. Ooh, jalapeno and, pepper jam. That sounds amazing. Yeah, Blueberry. that's crazy. That's a crazy I thing see. to even think of, but I'm sure it's delicious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Julianne oh, yes. says, uh, I know, Julianne, you are always busy with those um, with those big animals. <laughs> I love to follow Julianne and watch her farm. It is amazing. Yeah, I know. I love the stories she sends me. That is always, <laughs> always something interesting to read. Oh, and our friend um, Diane from Style Falcon. Um, she says her peach tree is doing nothing. Oh, oh gosh, for a better year next time. Yeah. Well, you can always make up for it by um, designing some new patterns. Uh. <laughs> that would be lovely, Diane. <laughs> <laughs> we always look forward to seeing what Style Falcon has to offer. I so buy it as soon as it comes out. So I haven't had a chance to make them all yet, but they're coming. Yep. She's going to be on my show uh, not in the not too distant future. We're going to be talking mm -hmm. about her newest, her newest pattern. So that'll be fun. Mm -hmm. You know me. I always like to bring on all the good stuff and share it with everybody. So... That's exactly what we're going to do tonight. So I think I'd like to start out by um, playing a little video. So um, this is my first time I've tried playing a video on here. So let's see if how this works. I think it should... I told you we were going to talk about using old stuff. Here we go. We're going to see this in detail tonight. This one, I think it's done. There's more. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I kept thinking. <laughs> Am I done? Lots of denim. Lots of lots of old denim. <laughs> love those place mats. They are my favorite, favorite thing of everything I've seen already. Oh, thank <laughs> you. They were fun. Oh my. So tell us what we just got done looking at. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. Okay. So those were all what we call, I guess, the faux cathedral window because they're definitely not the really old fashioned, beautiful way of making one, but they're a rag quilt, right? And oh, exactly. a number of years ago, I wanted to get into making those and I de just devoted myself to figuring out how can I make these in more than one way so that we can all have access to them using our old jeans, our old denim. Yeah. So I, we're going to um, look at the, at the pattern and find out, you know, how you, how you cut those in, in just a minute here. But I, my first burning question is where do you get all the jeans? Oh, that's a good question. So, you know, as I was doing this, I mean, Joanne, I have just cut hundreds and hundreds of pairs of jeans at this point, because as you're, you know, y'all know, as you're making a pattern and you're trying something out, you got to test it. So pretty much when I would go to work, I would just say, 
I would send out emails to coworkers and say, can I have all your old oh. jeans? <laughs> and before you donate them, can I have them? And I got a circle going where people just started to know, you know, oh, you know, Heather needs jeans. And they would just get dropped off at my house or someone would call me and, you know, it could sometimes just be one pair. It's like, hey, that's great. I can definitely make use of this. Plus yard sales and uh, rummage sales, things like that. Okay. So thrift shops maybe or yeah. not? Well, yeah. Thrift shops have gotten more expensive because it's become much more trendy, but yeah. they used to have jeans for, you know, almost nothing. And those are a little, it's hard to do this, you know, if you're going to pay $10 for a pair of jeans or something. And also I did it because I wanted people to be able to use the denim of their family. You know, we all, I hear okay. from people all the time. I've got giant bags from my sons, my husband, it's, you know, things like that. So those were my focus. So do you, do you sort them by size, by color, by, do you have any kind of particular method you use? That's a good question. So if you go into my closet, uh, my sewing closet, I have my stacks of regular quilting, et, et cetera. But I also have shelves of just denim that I've saved. And I like to cut down my denim. So I'm cutting off the top so that I use the legs and the quilt and I sort them by color, just like you said. So black and blue, the, the traditional blues are the thing they're going to have the most of. And then the colored denim is a little bit less, but you can ask my mom because a couple weeks ago, she's watching right now. Um, she helped me clean out my closet and she's hey, just jeans, <laughs> jeans, jeans everywhere. Oh my <laughs> Oh, that you know, so do you let me ask you this do you have any trouble discarding the parts that are like not so perfect or do you have this feeling like everything could be turned into something so that's a good question i definitely try so the top part of the jean sort of like from the top of the leg up i set aside and i use another projects pot holders i can use the zippers you'll see some of the zippers the fronts of the jeans i can use for circles in between the circles uh, I do a couple, sometimes I do things like I'll stuff my pillows with the leftover pieces because they really are, are small and narrow. Okay. So there's a, and also I, I think I told you too, I like to make a uh, bowls with a uh, fabric bowls with some of the denim. So you can use it for that too. So it's, I try to get a lot of use out of it as much as possible, but sometimes stuffing turns out to be a way to use the small pieces. So Patty says, do we need to start calling you the denim lady? The inventive sure. denim. The inventive inventive denim. denim. <laughs> oh, let's see. I think we had another. Yeah, we had another question here. So Nancy says, are they the well-loved jeans? So are they nice and soft? Do you have any criteria as far as like weight or stiffness or anything like that? Good question. So what I found as I was making these, lots of experimentation, was that as I would get jeans from men, and a lot of the ones I got were from men, they tended to not have any stretch to them. So they were the heavier weight, they were thicker in general, and they didn't have stretch. Now, they're if they're 100% cotton, they do a fabulous job puffing up and, and turning into that real that nice fluffy red quilt. But what also would happen is I also had lots of denim jeans with uh, spandex, stretch in them, lycra, and those don't shred in the dryer. You know, they don't fluff up. That's okay. okay. I've totally figured it out. I just use the uh, types of brushes, like stiff bristled brushes, and I just give those a nice scrub and I still get a great look. So you can use anything from super light to heavy. And so even if it has lycra in it, then it's still, you just still looks really nice. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's good to know. Cause I know, you know, doing embroidery on jean jackets, which I've done a ton of, yes. um, they are, they're all different and you need different stabilizers for different ones, you know, when you're doing, um, embroidery, but you're mostly sewing with the denim. Exactly. Mostly, right. You can definitely embroider in the middle. That's kind of a new area I want to go into, but yes, this is sewing. Okay. And then um, Patty wants to know, like a chenille brush type of thing. Hold on. I have one right here. Okay. But yes, Patty, Good. definitely. Good. But just because for convenience, this is just a cleaning brush. Oh, Obviously, has not scrubby. been. A scrubby. You know, yeah, no. Stiff, stiff bristles. Uh, and then we just, I just go around the edges on that denim and it, it shreds it for me. Whereas it won't do it in the dryer when it's got a uh, lycra in it. Okay. Okay. I, you know, I wouldn't have even thought about that because I haven't tried to shred right. with, with like chenille. Yes. Chenille brush is great. 
Okay. Um, and uh, Anne says embroidery does so good on denim. Yes, it does. Yes. Embroidery, in my opinion, I mean, uh, denim, in my opinion, begs you to embroider it. Like I have on a blank denim shirt tonight. You, you know, must embroider that, girl. I know. It, it, you know sometimes you, you, you buy it and you stick it in the closet and you end up wearing it a few times. You kind of forget about it. But it when I see blank denim, I <laughs> hear it crying it. out. Embellish me, <laughs> embellish me, please. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah. And um, Dee Dee uh, says she cuts the legs of jeans into long strips <gasps> to use um, for stuffing ottomans. Very smart. Oh, That's a yeah. good one. I love that, Dee Dee. We need pictures. And somebody's already noticing the embroidery on your top. Did you? I know. Okay. So I didn't embroider it. Do you ever feel conflicted when you yeah. didn't do well, it? That, the, you know the right answer. I, you know, obviously it's the honest one. I didn't, but I could have. But I could have. Yeah. I was, okay, let me just say, when you were going to ask me about inspiration and things later, Joanne, this is an inspiration piece for me because I'm like, I, I want to do this. Yeah. So yeah. Thank you. And, that, but... and, and that's, that's okay. <laughs> it is good to um, buy things sometimes just to have that um, for, you know, it's the same as clipping out a magazine yeah. picture for inspiration okay. you get to wear it. <laughs> And our friend Carrie. Carrie's here. Hey, Carrie, good to have Hello. you here tonight. And then um, Dee Dee says, yes, uh, embroidery, especially on jean yes. jackets. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Okay, we got an interesting oh. one here. Um, <laughs> her grandson got a white Hi. denim jean jacket. I was told, no, <laughs> no embroidery. Well, Aww. that's okay. He's his own, right? <laughs> All right. I guess Teach we got his go own. Ahead. And yeah. then... Um, Let's see. Um, Karen, Hello, Karen with us here. Hey, Karen. Yeah, Nancy says uh, we used to embroider our denim. Yeah, yeah. I've I actually even embroidered. Um, uh, well, I, I sewed embroidered patches on the whole waistband of of you know uh, jeans one time just for a novel place to put it. You know, <laughs> that's nice. I like now, that. Now we can make our own patches. That's right. So that's pretty cool. All right, so I bet you've got um, lots of jeans needles hanging around your sewing room. Am I right? <laughs> yes, I do. And I would buy those in bulk, you know, just, just I needed a ton of those. So absolutely. 90s, 100s, um, something thick and, and heavy duty. Yes. Do you ever go below a 14 or above uh, a 100? Um, so I have tried a 110. I don't think it's necessary. Uh, just yeah. again, through a lot of experimentation, what worked, what didn't work. Um, it, it worked, but boy, those are thick. They so are. really, um, uh, you know. They make a real thunking mm -hmm. noise, don't they? Yeah. That, they do. I don't think it was yeah. necessary. Yeah. Okay. And how about thread? Do you pretty much stick to regular sewing thread and like polyester, good quality polyester? Yeah, that's a good question. And it's come up a lot, that question. And honestly, I really have had good success with just a 50 weight cotton. I have not had an issue with it not being strong enough, but honestly, I also think a, a good polyester would be perfect as well. Because okay. I know, um, you know, a lot of people, a lot of times, even just for like top stitching on jeans, they want to try to mimic the look of mm -hmm. ready to wear. And, you know, it's tricky because... It our modern computerized machines, they're designed to do so many wonderful things, but they don't really like it when you feed them thick thread. That's yes. just not the way the tension system is all designed yes. to work. So I've used top stitching thread. I'd like to know if you have too, uh, but very sparingly. And mm -hmm. I really try to use something else instead of it most times because it just really doesn't flow through the machine really easily. It does not. I agree. I have tried. I have tried to mimic that, like you're saying as well. What I think I like even a little better is on a lot of our machines, we have those those hand-stitched stitches, you know, that they will repeat themselves yeah. several times. And that seems to work a little better with more of a regular thread. And if you're just doing it decoratively, another option is bobbin work. So, you know, totally you can bobbin work. Up my bobbin work uh, <laughs> videos, if you want to look up on that, but a good idea. Yeah, um, Patty, you bring up a, a good a good point. Um, I actually should know that because I have one of those machines, but I can't say that I've used it with thicker thread. It does so like an industrial machine, though. So, 
How about you, Heather? Have you done anything with the 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 brother PS fifteen hundred and using thicker thread in that machine? Are I have not had a chance. Okay. No, Patty, you're giving me awesome. a Patty, you're giving me a challenge. I'll have to test that mm -hmm. out. And then um, uh, Diane has a she uses a denim top stitching presser foot, oh. denim top stitching here, and a denim top stitching needle. Good. There we go. Good. Okay. There, it's yeah. always a, a matter of experimentation, and then. Teresa has a really good tip. She says triple stitch or bobbin work. Yeah. The triple stitch, that's one of our friend Angela Wolf's uh, favorite little techniques. <laughs> we use that triple stitch and always make sure you lengthen it because the default length is, is pretty short. Good idea, Teresa. And then Carrie says the one tens don't even fit in her machine. Ooh, I no, didn't know that. You're not the first one I've heard that Carrie, because that opening you know, is really designed for something more normal when you're inserting a thread. One so. tens are huge. I don't even bother. It's just something I had tried. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you really are, whenever you can get away with it, using, in, in regular sewing, in my book, I try to find a way to use the smallest needle I can get away with for sewing. Mm -hmm. Embroidery, you know, embroidery is pretty, pretty standard. Right. We use a, a, anywhere from 11, maybe a 14 on occasion, but mostly 11s, right? Maybe yes. a 12. Mm -hmm. But for sewing, I always try to get away with the, the thinnest needle, smallest needle I can get away with, and the thinnest thread that I can get away with. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I like some of the European polyester sewing threads, because they're oh. a little bit finer weight. And it's just, you know, any time you build up bulk in your seam with, with thread mm -hmm. or big holes, it's yep. going to kind of, you know mess a little bit with the neatness of the way that seam is going to press when it's finished. So that's just a little, little quick tip for tonight. Oh, Karen's got a good one. She puts a uh, eight weight thread in the looper oh. of her cover stitch. Ah, yeah. That, yeah. that would be a really nice decorative effect. Um, I know with the cover stitch, you do have to be a little careful with the, the thicknesses because that again, the whole idea with all of our machines these days that are designed for us to get, all kinds of different um, effects out of is that they're home sewing machines and they, they're not like an industrial machine in the sense that in an industrial setting, I'd love to know if anybody here has ever worked in an industrial setting. I I've been there in way my early days, every machine has a purpose. So there's only one machine to sew one type of layer, one type of thickness, one type of operation. And today we've got all these great machines with all these great stitches, but they really are not designed to do big out of the box type of, of sewing. Right. So got to be a little Absolutely. bit, a little bit careful with that. Yeah. And Carrie likes the, Carrie likes wow. the triple stitch too. Well, I want to take a look at the actual pattern that coordinates with that great, great video that we saw. So let me bring up my picture that I have and you can tell us a little bit about this because how in the world did you create all those beautiful circles and sew them all together and have them all match? Tell me, please. <laughs> I will tell you, I will tell you. Um, there are two ways to create this quilt. One is the way I came up with originally and I love it and it's a great way to go. The other way is what you're looking at here and that is when with a die that I created with AccuQuilt. So this particular die, and you can see my stacks of circles. Seriously, guys, I have made so many circles over the years. But you can hopefully see they kind of look like they already have a ragged edge. And that's because after I created the first pattern, I said, what can I do better? How can this be easier? And we pre-fringed these. And I also came up with some special notches that make this different than any other circle die that there is on the market because I did it actually long before those started coming out and realized as because I had all the experience in making these the other way what we needed to do to make these different so I can uh, definitely show you what makes these go together fast and that's what I love they go together fast and no clipping the seams all right I think you're going to actually show us a little bit of that hands-on in a minute huh yes but I got another picture. <laughs> this one just to show you it's dog friendly too, right? Isn't that one of the great things about that kind of fabric? Um, it's, it's practically indestructible. So it really makes for a perfect, uh, 
perfect anything. Certainly a great quilt. I know, you know, um, you've made so many different ones, but that's just yeah. shows you. <laughs> they, they just would stack up and, and I captured this one day. Little Sam was uh, helping me out. So Aww. yes, they are indestructible. They don't get dirty. You can just brush them off. They're perfect. And Erin says she has that dye. So she yeah, already yeah. has your dye. Thank you. Very good. I'm We're going to so talk a little bit that. more about that. But um, I have to ask you, what does the 300 working right. perfectly mean? <laughs> what is that? So if you've ever used a dye, and many of you probably haven't necessarily used an AccuQuilt dye, they have many rag dye quilt or uh, dyes. And they all have a fringed edge. So over time, and you can actually see probably in that photo, there's a little bit of white at the to the left and right side and the top and bottom. And those are the fibers that get stuck in it as you're cutting the, the, the fabric. And so AccuQuilt says, you know, they give you actually a little pick. It looks like a dental pick. And they have you pull out the strands of thread over time so they don't get stuck. Well, I'm, like I said, I like to test. So I said, well, you know, I'm just going to cut with this dye until it doesn't work anymore be, instead of taking all of these things out. So at this point, it was still working perfectly after 300 circles had been cut without oh. taking out any strands in the oh meantime. My. Oh, so, my. So amazing. Oh, absolutely so amazing. Well, well Heather, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit. I know to me personally, I mean, I'm familiar with the the um, brother scan and cut as well. You are, and you've mm -hmm. done a lot a lot of work with that. But what? How is um? What is you know for for those of us that either are new to it or just aren't familiar? What actually is die cutting? What does it mean? And if you want to switch question. over your camera and show us, let me know. Uh, sure, let me start and then I'll switch over for you. But you can see in that circle, uh, oh, Lottie, thank you. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. I, it's so good to get feedback from people. These dies have very sharp pieces of metal in them, unlike, say, the Scan and Cut, where we're just using a blade to cut their fabric on the mat. In this case, the die actually is one size with lots of pieces of metal that stay there and stay sharp and cut. Would you like me to switch over, Joanne, and show? Let me do that. Let me go to my other camera. Here we go. And show you what I mean. Okay, so this is, in this case, this is the die. Let me bring it over here. So this is the packaging. You can see that it makes the things you saw. So it looks like this. Now, AccuQuilt has... Uh, more than one cutting machine, but this was made for their AccuQuilt Go, their Go cutter. And in here are very sharp blades. And that is why there is foam on the outside and there is foam on the inside. Because if I were to push down on this, this would hurt quite a bit, but the foam protects me and gives us a place for the fabric to go. So this is something, like I said, that I had created with some special things, not just the circle, so that they would go together easier. You can see about how thick it is and it needs a cover. So you get a plastic cover to go over it and then you sandwich the fabric in between. This is my AccuQuilt Go Cutter. Now there is more than one type, but I have the manual one. So it has a handle that I will run my fabric through. And then it just, these are the rollers. So it goes from one side or to the other side. So when the fabric is on and it's not on right now, but I would just push this in and then I would go like this to move it through and the pressure from the roller cuts the fabric into something that looks like this. So you can see this pair of jeans uh, was cut. So let me show you how that works. Let's take, let's just take a square that I have here. Now this is just a lightweight denim, but I'll just cover this up. And the instructions are actually on the packaging for making this placemat, like the ones we showed you. So AccuQuilt has every designer create a project that you get basically for free. So let me open this inside and show you that here. Can you see that? I think you can. Yeah, we can see that good. 
Great. So these were my diagrams that I created for them and my instructions. And it shows you, okay, when you buy this die, you should at least without having to buy anything else, be able to make yourself a set of placemats, all the directions and diagrams. And I'll show you how this works. So you take your die with the foam side up, you place your fabric down. It can go right side up or right side down. That part doesn't matter. Your plastic cover can go either way. Actually, AccuQuilt recommends alternating it so that it doesn't get uh, distorted. So you bump it up against the side. And then in my case, I have the one where you hand crank, but they have electric ones as well. I don't have an electric one. Okay, so then I'm going to lift this up, see if that's there, and pull this up. And you can see there is my die or excuse me, there's my fabric cut just like that. So it, you can, with anything that's not too thick, you can do more than one layer. This is a thinner denim, so I could probably do two, but cotton fabric, flannel, you can do more than one layer at a time. When you have something that's thicker, then you need to uh, do one layer at a time. Now here is a leg of a jean. I get a lot of questions from people saying, why is it just six and a half inches? Although I think this, this makes a nice size, but why not eight inches, 10 inches, 12 inches? Why not, you know, a bigger one? And the reason is that this was designed to work with jeans and for memory quilts. And we're not, it's, it's, purpose wasn't to necessarily be used with denim off the bolt, although I've done plenty of those. Mm -hmm. and what I found over time was a six and a half inch circle on the majority of jeans lets you get the most cuts as you move down the leg. So you can probably see this was just an average type size of jeans, um, maybe a younger person. Now, obviously, you could get a little bit more with a larger pair, a little bit less if it was a kid's pair. But in general, a six and a half inch die let you get the most usage and the biggest that you could have. So that was the reasoning for that size. That really looks perfect, too, because just from seeing the samples that you showed, um, you know, with the pictures that we saw, placemats, table runners, all those kinds of things. You know, if you're, if the circles aren't manageable size to divide up, you're yes. going to kind of end up with an awkward, awkward size when you're finished. So I like Definitely. the way it, it Again, a lot, lot, a lot of trial and error went into these, a lot, a lot of, um, and a lot of practice jeans. So you can run an entire leg through like this if you want. You can cut into to squares. It kind of just, I usually end up just doing a leg, but then um, I'm going to go ahead and bring it back over. And oops, I had one string to catch. There you go. So, and then what I'll do is I'll move this up so that I'm just at the edge. I do very much try to get the maximum amount that I can usage wise from the pants or the fabric that I'm using. So you'll, you see, there is some here that we're not using, but, um, sometimes you'll have like a, a little guy catch. We have a little one catch there, but that's no big deal. So just like and that. So we're just cranking them out. And Teresa's asking, will it cut over a seam? Oh, good question. So yes, it will, but uh, it's, it can be, you might, I don't, I was trying to see if I had one here. Oh, here, I cut over one earlier, I believe. So it did go right. Okay, so here it went right up to the edge. So it is strong enough to definitely cut through. Sometimes it just varies. You may have a couple strings catch in it. Now, uh, I believe it would even probably go through my uh, uh, hem there. Let me see. Ah. But it, it is very strong. It will it will go through. Um, that definitely went through the, the double seam there on the edge. Good to know. And I definitely, I'm trying to remember, I think I have some where I purposely cut through a seam so that the seam was running down the middle. So yes, I definitely have done that. Very good. I mean, um, you can't see the comments right now, but I'm getting a few asking me 
um, where this uh, little furry friend came from. And yes, my cat came into the room and insisted on <laughs> insisted on being part of the show. She's a she's a show hog, so oh. we, had to make a, we had to make a space for her. <laughs> Pardon the interruption. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that's fine. Okay, so you can kind of see here where we have the fabric sewn in. And here is an example. So what you're doing is you're taking these circles and you're sewing them into rows. And then when you press them open, it gives you a place to nestle in your squares. Now, when I was designing this, I am very much a traditional quilter and I love charm squares and five inch squares. And I wanted to use something that, uh, let me pull one over, that something that I could get a lot of uh, use out of that was pre-cut. So here I'm using a pre-cut and you can see these are just from five inch charm square packs. I often will use a piece of batting, but you don't have to. That okay. settles into here. This goes on top. You're folding over your fabric on either side. And this is underneath. You should, it, it will be too big and that's okay. It goes a little too large. And then you're sewing these down. So in this case, I have put these all together mm -hmm. and I've just sewn just on the inside of the rag, the ragged edge. Yeah. Now I've spent an enormous amount of time clipping these seams before I had the die. Okay. So this was, uh, let me show you. So I could, I could see pretty good um, that it, that it cut those notches, but I didn't realize it was cutting all the, it was fringing it for you too. That's a it. huge time saver. Oh, it trust. Oh, Joanne, seriously. I mean, then you just have to put it straight into the wash. Let me show you one other piece about how this goes together. And I believe I have one. Go ahead. Darlene has a comment. She says, wow, I thought you were going to use plates for your circles. <laughs> <laughs> and that's like the way that there was right before before I started doing this and I, would, I spent time online, just looking for a pin. Um, I might use this thick one. Uh, that's, that was, those were the kinds of things people would use. And it's not that you can't use that and that's not a problem, but I just really wanted to find something a little bit more, uh, exact and accurate and easier. Okay. So what are these little notches for? So the purpose for these notches in the corner is so, and I'm using a giant Sharpie so you can see it. I wouldn't normally use a Sharpie. I would just use, you know, some kind of regular marking pen. Sure. But you're, ta you're taking your, let me come in a little bit. You're taking your ruler of any size and you're lining it up in with these notches. So it's lined up here and it's lined up here to create a straight line. So this is a straight line from one side to the other. And then you're going to take your pin and then you are going to draw a line from one notch to the other. And there really wasn't a way with the circles to get that straight line without different amounts of measuring. Once you have a line, then you're able to put these right sides together and then this gives you a line to sew from here to here. I would even say that with your laser on some machines, you might not mm -hmm. even have to draw the line. Uh -huh. Just go straight from here to here. Good so idea. once, go ahead. Sorry, what was that? I said, that's a good idea. I mean, why not, right? I mean, when yeah. I was doing this, I didn't have that. But you can see here. So here was the line. So I drew this line. And we sewed back stitch is important. So this doesn't come apart one side to the other. Then I opened this, pressed it, and then I sewed my next line, and I went these guys right sides together, sew my line, and then come open. And all you're doing is making as many of these as you need for your rows, and that's where my patterns come in. They tell you, you know, to make a lap size, queen size, double, you know, how many of these to sew. Oh, yeah. That's, and then you're that's really important because... Even like fabric requirements, I would, you know, I wouldn't even be able to yeah. guess what I would need for something like that. Exactly. Without and I tell you also about how many pairs of jeans you'll need. Again, it will vary based on the size. And then you're going to come back through. Now, you don't have to use charm squares. You can use shirts. You know, maybe you have uh, old shirts or clothing that you oh, want to use. what a great idea. It could certainly be anything that you, I just really love reusing clothing and bring it into quilts. So 
there is definitely more than one option here, but this kind of gives you an idea of how it goes together. And then you sew your rows together. And once the, this is a quilt as you go project. So once everything, let me show you more than one row. Once everything is sewn together, it's done. So here's two rows that are sewn together. Okay. And, that, and that's, that's Anne's question. She says, how are the rows sewed together? Okay. Hold on. Let's, let me move this out of the way so you can see. So again, these little notches are going to come in handy. So let me show you on a row. So let's pretend this row's done. It has moved. <gasps> uh oh, <laughs> that was light. <laughs> it probably got a little darker on that side. Yes, so sorry okay. about that. <laughs> okay, so I have a row here, and I'm going to use these notches to show me where to draw. So let me come up here. So this notch here and this notch here and this notch here. I just put my ruler up against all of those notches and then I use my pen and I draw again. I, I wouldn't use a Sharpie, but this is so you guys can see. Got so it. You can see my line and then I'm going to take. So I have a couple rows there. I'm going to take this, turn it over. Take this row, line it up here, pin these through, and then sew across this line. And when I do, then I can just flip this over and I have another row attached. Uh -huh. It's really easy. And then from the front, you would have these to press open. Now I will tell you guys, I know I'm kind of simulating this here, but if you are, if you go to my YouTube channel, I have a video that shows you this and I'm actually doing it. <laughs> I'm not just saying do this and press it open, yeah. I actually yeah. show it and you can see, ex you get a start to finish on how to use it so that uh, you could, you could actually work along with me. But then once this is sewn together, say I press that. What I do, what I found was the fastest for sewing these down is kind of like a figure eight. So I sew this side and then I sew this side and then this side and back over. And then I come back down the other way. And it gives you this really nice, easy it's, seam. And like I said, because it's a die, it's already pretty fringe. It's absolutely beautiful. Patty says, oh, that is easy, easy, easy. <laughs> Hey, Carolyn's really cool. asking again, what size were the circles? You said six. Six and a half inches. Six They're half. six and a half. Now, also, I'm going to, I'll show you that I have this done without the die. So you don't have to do, you don't have to have the die if you don't want. Mm -hmm. So here's an example where this, it's just not fringed and they're six and a half inch circles. And in the pattern, I just tell you how far to come over with a ruler. I'm left-handed. I probably messes people up, but it tells you how far to come over so that you know where to draw the next line. I um, wondered if you could see my lines. Exactly. Uh, and so that you'll keep adding them, but it's made in exactly the same way. So this one is not the die. And so you can see that I need to clip these at the end. Or I actually have some customers, they just don't clip them. They just let this fray as it will. And there's really okay. not a problem with that either. So that whatever that works one, for you, right? Less what's that? I said whatever works for you. Exactly. And yep. here's one without the die. It's so, so you can pretty. See assembled oh in the same way. So I, I would encourage you, even if you don't have a die and that's not what you're interested in, you can absolutely still make this with my patterns. Uh, either way, either oh, way. Let I me come it. back. I love it. We got to take a look at your at your patterns in a minute here when you're ready to get back. Okay, um, I'm coming back. Other, to the Unless other you have camera. any questions. <laughs> yeah, well, your mom says pick up the camera <laughs> or pick up the light rather. Pick up the light. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh! Can you guys see anything? <laughs> yeah, we can see it. We can see it fine, but she's worried about it. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> it, it's okay. It, if you're ready to switch over, we can do we can show those. Let me let me go ahead and bring up your um the pictures of your patterns because I think probably, you know, if I had to vote, this would be my my favorite, favorite, favorite. This would be one of the prize winning ones because you have the ability to do it with the, you know, with the die cut or however, whatever mm -hmm. method you want. But um our friend uh Diane had said uh Diane from Style Falcon. Let me see if I can find her comment. She said that she loves the way it's so modular. And I agree a hundred, hundred percent. That is, it's so neat to be able to do things that are, 
you know, in, in parts like that, that just gives you that really um, sense of accomplishment for sure. Definitely. But um, Definitely. yeah, let's go ahead. Let me bring up your, your other patterns. And okay. while we're um, just looking at those pictures, let's go ahead. I've got quite a few comments that came through while you were uh, showing that. Before okay. I do that, I'm going to take one little second. Um, I just want to um, remind everybody, if you like this video, please hit the little like finger thumb thing. <laughs> Thumbs up. Um, Thumbs up. <laughs> if you haven't subscribed and hit the bell for notifications, um, I'm inviting you to do that now. I would love, love, love to have you um, on the list so that you know when everything new is going on here. And then I just like to make sure that I tell everybody, number one, I'm so thrilled to have you here on the live show. Thanks for taking time out of your um, precious time that you have to spend with us. And if you're watching on the replay, you're good to go too, because this is always uploaded right after it's over and you can watch as many times as you want to. All right. Yeah. So let me get back. Like I said, we had quite a few comments that came through. So um, Anne says she has the AccuQuilt cutter and many different dyes, but loves her scan and cut too. So Anne, that's a really good point because uh, Heather and I were talking a little bit before the show and I said, you know, die cutting is new to me. I will readily admit that. Scan and cutting is not new to me. Uh -huh. And I was trying to wrap my head around, you know, the differences, but obviously we know the scan and cut has a lot of features because it can it can scan so you can scan a pattern in and it can also cut and it can also emboss and do rhinestones and do all kinds of things that is another topic for another day <laughs> but yes. um AccuQuilt is designed to cut fabric pretty much period right yes that's right okay. you can cut paper but i mean it's probably mostly what you're cutting is for sewing Okay. And it's very popular with quilters to cut out their quilt blocks, just like you've mm -hmm. shown so that you've got just, you know, it saves all that manual measuring and template cutting and marking and all those. You just slap it down on there and give it a roll and you're, you're good, good to go. go. It's, <laughs> yeah. It looks like a, like it should be, uh, you could also turn it into a pasta making machine or something like that. <laughs> It has alternate uses. <laughs> oh my, that's what it reminds me of. Darlene <laughs> thought it was really cool. Um, Teresa said it's just too easy. I agree. <laughs> and um, Rhonda said, thanks so much for showing. She also, she was in the same boat that I was where I've never really seen an AccuQuilt cutter cut something. So that was pretty, that was pretty amazing. And Wanda says, wow, I need this. <laughs> well, that's part of the reason we do these shows so that you can see different things. I told you, you were going to be inspired for sure. We got a, um, quite a bit more to inspire you with, but that that definitely was something that um, if you haven't seen it before, gives you, gives you some real ideas. And Patricia really appreciates that there's a pattern to get started. I can't agree more that, you know, there's so many times you buy a, a tool or a you know, a pattern mm -hmm. and it's like, or a, a thing <laughs> and yes, yes. it's like, has nothing to go with it. So you're, it's like an orphan until you match it up with something that makes yes, sense. Definitely. So that's really great to have that. And then um, Patty says, Hmm, I like how, um, with the manual, you can go from either side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think she's probably comparing it to the scan and cut where it's only fed in one, one way. And Anne says she uses her 2.5 and 5-inch die to oh. cut up scraps. Oh, that's interesting. Great use. Strips, I'm imagining, Anne. Is yes. that what to do with it? Okay, cool. Um, Caroline loves pre-cuts. Yeah, I love also that you designed it, again, to work with charm packs because I see so many of them. And unless you want to, you know, build a quilt with a some kind of a pattern that's going to piece all those together sometimes they're just so pretty you buy them and then stack them up somewhere and don't know what to do with them i love that, using them that might have been part of my incentive joanna my need to get rid of a couple of those <laughs> makes perfect sense oh. yeah and jane says she's embroidered the center of her cathedral win uh, window that's what you call that what we were what you were making cathedral yes. window faux cathedral window right as in not traditional 
Right. Um, you use it at, for a valence for a sewing room. Yeah. I, you know, that's beautiful. the thing. You Once you learn how to make that, that construct that pattern, um, it's got so many possibilities. Absolutely. I, I brought this one up before. This was interesting from Sandra. She says, 30 years ago, she spent a lot of time with die cut machines for oh. math manipulatives. Wow. I would have liked to have been in your class. <laughs> So they didn't work well on fabric, but paper and cardstock. I bet I bet you got some real good lessons out of that. Yes. And Patty says it's more efficient. Yes. Anytime you can take the um, easier way, quicker way out, I'm all for it because you know what? It just gives you the opportunity to do more and to make more. So mm -hmm. it's really not lazy. It's just more efficient. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Julianne thought it was very interesting. She's going to have to rewatch. <laughs> and let's see. Karen said um, she had yeah. a great idea. It could be made into a cute jacket. Yeah. Definitely. Fun, 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 fun. And then Julianne says she can't wait to try it. <laughs> She's going to be going over to your YouTube channel. So, uh, all right. Well, let me bring up, um, you know, the, the whole thought of what these other patterns are, because I counted you have about 12 original mm -hmm. patterns in your inventive pattern line. Am I correct on that number? That is right. Yes. Yes. Constantly was trying to play with new things. You'll notice here on the screen, I have something kind of different. Uh, it's the service flag or the blue star banner. And this uh, was something that... I wanted to make, I did not serve in the military and I, I, I have so much admiration and respect for those who do. And so I started looking into this and the blue star banner or gold star banner, as many people know, and I actually became licensed by the U S army to make this pattern. And I was very proud of it and happy to have it because we can always purchase these, but as people who love to sew and create, I thought, wouldn't it be wonderful? And so you can do five different sizes of these, not just the window size from a little one you can actually wear all the way up to a lap size, but you know, in general, they're intended to be hung. And uh, so I was really happy with that. That is yeah. so neat. So neat. I think we have another whole page of, of patterns. Um, Some more. So I did post up there. If um, Now, we, we talked about your website. Let me go ahead and bring your um, website up as well. Um, but uh, your actual patterns are on your Etsy site. And I understand correct. they're all PDF downloads, correct? At this time, I actually am starting to turn them over to paper pattern as well. So you can get either one. Oh, neat. Yes. Very neat. Oh, that's great. Because... Some of us just like that glossy picture. We like to yes. handle yes. those, you know, <laughs> handle Absolutely. those instructions with our hands and spread it out when we're drinking tea and eating cookies. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All those things. Um, Caroline says that she has made quite a few sets of your denim pocket hot pads um, for, for um, presents. So that is great. That is great. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and Anne likes the chickens. I thought the chickens were super cute too, but I don't want to ignore this last one on the end here, this um, dizzy denim. Um, oh. I think, let me see. I've got another, another picture yeah. here showing that was actually featured in a magazine. Yeah, it was, it was fun. It was fun. It was. And it also shows that you can take these same blocks and, Turn them into many other things. Mm -hmm. So Definitely. it doesn't have to be a whole quilt. It can be a pillow. It can be a tote bag. It could be a wall hanging. Um, I just, I love all these, all these different ideas. Just amazing. So Heather, I guess, um, you know, thinking about all these wonderful things that you've done, there has to be uh, some special tools that you love to use and we would love it if you would share what those are. Yeah. So I was thinking about what that might be and I have a, let me pick this up. So I, one of the things that is, it's very basic, but we, there's blue pens, right? Water erasable pens out there. Mm -hmm. And I have found one that I just love because it is so, so consistently good 
And I'm going to see if like how, if this will, if not, I'm going to, okay, come in, come out. Oh, I don't think I'm going to be able to show you. Can you read that? There we go. How about that? It's called the Leonis Water Erasable Pen. And it is a blue water erasable pen. And it is so good. I love this water erasable pen. It's got a great dark blue color and you can really see it, but then you can wash it out really well. And I just, up until I had found this, I was always struggling with getting a nice water soluble pen. And I just love this one. Oh, wait, I can't hear you, Joanne. Can you hear me? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one that is um, not air erasable, correct? It's just correct. water erasable. Water okay. erasable. So it stays there until you want to get rid of it. Yes, but what I love great. about it is you can really see it. And some of the other blue pens I've used is like one or two times with the cap off and I can barely see it and it's dry. And for whatever reason, this set is just, they're amazing. I uh -huh. love these. I love Very these. good. I know I have gotten in the habit of storing all of my marking pens in a Ziploc bag. Oh, that's And that seemed to help tremendously from the ones that don't have the really tight that's locking caps. So good idea. That's pretty good. Smart. I would share one other thing that I have grown to love. And that is, it's a simple thing, but it's a, a pigtail or a hub to hang off of my embroidery machine. And it happens this one is an OESD one, but they there there are a lot of them out there because you know we're always putting flash drives into our embroidery machine. And those little those little guys um those little ports they start to get worn out and they start to not read our USBs after a while. And and so these things are just I just let this hang off of my, my uh, embroidery machine. And then all I have to do is change my USB drive. And it, it's made a wonderful, huge difference. Patty, you have them too. You know, yeah, I'm talking yeah. about. I've got that on my, on my need to get list because I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. And uh, <clears throat> Kelly Smith has been kind enough to put the name of that water soluble thank marking you. pen right there in the chat so thank you kelly that is exactly what i was talking about love those and where do you think it would be likely you could buy that I, are we allowed to share those kinds of things because it's sure we're not we're on a okay i just got them yeah. on amazon <laughs> okay that's fine and I, and I believe they came in a pack of five it wasn't like one okay like i haven't five. seen that at a dealer you can always ask your dealer first which is always a nice thing to do. But yeah, some of those things just aren't uh, aren't readily available or they're selling other ones. And yeah, good to know. Good to know. And Lisa ah, you said she loves hers. Awesome. Very good. And Kelly says she Googled it. It comes up in lots of places. Oh, right. <laughs> so once Great. you have that name, you'll have no problem um, finding it. That's good. That's very good. Yeah. Um, Lisa, we don't have a link, but we just have the name. So if you... Type yeah. in the, the name, L-E-O-N-I-S, water-soluble marking pen. You I should be this. able to find it. Yeah, exactly. That's pretty neat. All right. So are those, those are kind of your faves? Your yeah, favorites? I was thinking about what I really like. Uh, those ones stuck out to me. I mean, there's so many, right, that we have. I'd say the other thing I really love is having a small iron at my disposal. I find I use that constantly. I love my big one. I need my big one. But the little one, those little ones that you can kind of tote around, got tons of uses for those. I, you know, I always uh, I always chuckle a little bit. I love to ask this question. I'd love to ask in the chat if you want to share what your some of your favorite tools are too. But whenever I have a guest on, that's always one of my, my big, big five questions. But part of it is because I have a, a treadle machine in my bedroom that functions as a nightstand for me. And there's what? I, I forget now. <laughs> we have uh, four or six drawers. Four drawers. Okay. Oh, four drawers. Four drawers. On four drawers. And when you think about it, back in the day when that machine was used, by the way, I don't have a machine in it. The machine was trashed long ago, but the, you know, I just like the way it kind of looks. And the drawers are great for storing all those little things that you need by your bedside. <laughs> but everybody that sewed in those days, other than maybe having uh, a basket, you know, a sewing basket, 
pretty much all their tools went in those little drawers. That's <laughs> today, right. We need whole closets and, you know, Room. everything else to store all that. But sewing has come a long, long way yes, for sure. Has. <laughs> oh, five in a package. Um, crafting with Marilyn just said. That's what I thought. Yeah. And um, Kelly wants to know, what is your favorite thread? Brand or type or, I mean, good question. Yeah, that's a, bit, that's a broad question, Kelly. Why don't you narrow it down just a um, little bit? I was just looking at my thread. I mean, if it were just talking, uh, you know, embroidery thread, I'm, I, I mean, 40 Let's ways. talk sewing thread. Let's talk sewing thread, first of all. Um, shoot. Why am I blinking on the name? It's right here. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Well, while you're looking for that, I'll bring up just a couple of Celeste's uh, Can't Live Without Her Wonder Clips. Ah, um, Wonder Clips. Daddy Can't Live Without Her Kai Scissors and a Seam Ripper. Yeah, unfortunately, uh -huh. my most used notions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> that is true. That is true. And Celeste always says in a small iron, but larger than the clover iron. Yeah, yeah. the clover one's more, more like just a little... Yeah, tip kind of a thing. Yeah, totally. I agree. <laughs> How about Orifil? That's my go-to. Yeah. Okay. I had a feeling maybe you were going to say Orifil. Yeah. Don't think of it off the top of my head, but I sure do love Orifil. Yeah. And, and um, Dee Dee's asking. Oh wait, let me bring about the wrong one. Dee Dee's asking, uh, what brand and size needle do you use on sewing denim? So you said before you use a a jeans needle, fourteen, maybe sixteen, most often, right? That that would be correct. And Brand wise, um, boy, do you I have a favorite? I, I don't think I, I mean, I'm used to using organ needles and I love them. Uh, but I can't say that I haven't used Schmetz or, um, what else would there be? I can't think off the top of my head, but I haven't had a negative experience with any of the others. Okay. I think Schmetz is always kind of the go-to for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's available almost everywhere, even the big box stores. And it comes in, I think, more types than than most needles do. But when we, you know, that's talking mostly sewing. For embroidery, there are some other, other mm -hmm. options out there. And in fact, I have a guest coming on, uh, not next month, but the month after that, who's an expert in a lot of those different um different types of needles that we would use for different types of embroidery situations. So save Great. your, save your question for, for that. Um, Kelly wants to know what's your favorite sewing genre. So does she mean like quilting or embroidery or. That would like be that? my guess. Yeah, that would be my guess. Mm -hmm. So I started as, well, I started garment sewing originally and then went to, because, you know, I think we, a lot of us do in school and then went to quilting. And I'd say for years, quilting was my thing. And I love quilting. Uh, but now I love machine embroidery too. And I want to go back to garment sewing. So do I have to pick one? Can I, I have know like what? a the, rolling? <laughs> your, your, your proper answer could be one to this question I like to ask whenever I do um, big groups. And that is, how many of you like to sew garments? Okay, they raise your hand. How many of you like to sew quilts? How many of you like to do crafts? How many want to do it all? <laughs> That's okay. Oh, okay. Right here. <laughs> Raise your hand if you want to do it all. Absolutely. Oh, so Patty has a, a um, interesting point too. She says her brother 4000D did not like Ooh. organ needles. And that is true. Sometimes just you find, um, you know, one one thing or another that is a little bit of a variable on, on mm -hmm. your machine. Definitely. Definitely. And we've got we've got quite a few that want to do it all, right? We yeah. want to switch all of the check all the boxes. <laughs> for sure. well, we work off our motivation, right? right. So now, oh, I saw something. I'm motivated. I'm inspired. I got to go do that. Shiny object syndrome, which I have so bad. Absolutely, but that's what keeps those creative juices flowing for sure. Mm -hmm. So, in, in, as we wrap up, I'm kind of looking at your room. It looks so beautiful. And I love the the samples that you have hanging up. And I know every time I've seen you do a video, everything is lined up so nice. Wow. So I'm going to ask you if you'd like to maybe give us some of your tips for maybe organizing and yeah. and or kind of combined with um, making your sewing space a happy place. Those are good questions. So I, if I think about this, 
for me, one of the things that I really need is everything I need to be able, I need to be able to see it. And I don't know how many of my fellow people here feel the same, but if I, if it goes into something, I'll just won't remember I have it. I don't know it's there. So I definitely organize and store with clear containers, whether they go into a cupboard or whether they stay out, everything has to be clear. I need to be able to see it. And I've just pretty much gotten rid of anything dark or uh, that I can't see into the container. So that's really important to me. The other thing that I try to do, I'm not perfect on it at all, but one of the things I really try to do is clean up my space more frequently because I definitely know that if I have a nice clean counter, even if everything else isn't perfect, that I can do a lot better. So I've tried to get in the habit now of at least once a week, I just come in for a couple hours. I, I get everything put into its respective container and place and then continue from there because it's not natural for me. I definitely just want to create, 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 have fun and sort of throw things as I go. And I know that just doesn't really help my creative flow. So that is something I try to do. And I'd say the last thing is I try to have things that inspire me and get make me happy and for me one of those things is just having my dogs Aww. and their dog beds and letting them be with me while I create yeah I know it's hard to, it's hard to keep them out at times when you want to or need to <laughs> but they don't yeah. understand that they want to be with you and you want to be with them so yes, yes. <laughs> well I know you're talking about inspiring um yourself through things that you love and enjoy and I think I see a beehive back there. So <laughs> I'm going to bring up one more picture and we will end on a sweet note. <laughs> okay. okay. You are Aww, not only known cool. for all your creativity, but you and your, um, your dear hubby, you could tell a little bit about um, the bees. <laughs> the, that's the bees. We've been doing bees now for over five years. Uh, we moved to Tennessee. We got bees and we are the Banks Honey Bee Homestead. And uh, we have about, I think we have 11 hives now. And uh, we just harvested, I think we have about, about 150 pounds of honey that we harvested this wow. year. Every year it's a little bit more. We're fortunate. It's fun. It's a good time. And uh, so we enjoy it. That is so amazing. That is so amazing. And that, and that little, um, little gnome with the with the flower and the bees. Is <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. <laughs> well, society says you have been such a help in learning how to use the scan and cut. And she wants yeah, to thank you so, so much for that. And I just want to thank you so much for everything you shared with us tonight. It's just been absolutely just so inspiring. And like I said, at the very beginning, every time I see you creating, um, you, you teach me something I learn from you and I'm always always just gets gets me going and wanting to do more. And I know that that's been the same for everybody that's here tonight. So thank you so much, Joanne. I feel the exact same way about you. And to everyone who's watching, thank you for your ideas and your contributions. I love it. So we really had, had a, um, a great group here tonight and I hope you'll be back next time. So the next show will be um, on the fourth Monday of August. I've got a whole different kind of vibe going on for for August. So um, we'll be talking less about machines, but more about something very important if you want your uh, your garments to look good on you. So Ooh, I can't wait. I'm going to be there <laughs> we'll get that next month. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. We'll for see you again me. soon. And until Next time, I wish everybody a world full of pretty stitches. Bye-bye. <laughs>